To thee we come, O Lord, our God. Before thine altar, Father, thou knowest best our yearning hearts. This supplication answer. Lift up from want thy people, Lord. Bless us, O God. O Father, bless our toil. Under thy cross we stand prepared to serve thee with devotion. Be it with sweat of blood or tears or humble resignation. For we thy people are, O Lord, Save us, O God, O Father, bless our toil. Please be seated. I ask that in your prayers today that you offer prayer for our organist who is suffering from a cold uh, with that being said, we will also offer prayers during our intentions for our brothers and sisters who are sick and ill. Today, we will be celebrating Holy Mass in the contemporary rite, and I ask that you please share the Holy Mass with me. We will begin on page 63 of the Mass Service Booklets. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. And now, let us turn unto the altar of God and make an examination of our consciences. for your penance of the confession that you have made. For the next three nights, besides offering the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be, I would like to have you take a bulletin with you, or if you have it on the computer, to reflect upon the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and reflect upon his words. And now asking God for forgiveness, and asking that he would absolve us of our sins, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy the sinner whose fault is removed, whose sin is forgiven. Happy those to whom the Lord repeats <laughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, 
We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord our God, you established the standards whereby we should live. Forgive us for adopting the standards of the world, which only betray. Cause us to delight in your word, that we may indeed be he blessed. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Surely, if you would proclaim the word. A reading of Zephaniah the prophet. Seek the Lord, all you humble on the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm taken from Psalm 146 is, Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The fatherless and the widow the Lord sustains but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through our generations, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. A reading from the first book of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise, and God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong, and God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in God's commands. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Niech benja pofoloni Jesus Christus. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, on this, the fourth Sunday in the Ordinary, we see the continuation of the life and ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was not that long ago that we celebrated his nativity of the Word that was made flesh. It wasn't that long ago that we saw Jesus being baptized by John in the River Jordan following his baptism. We will read in the season of Advent of Jesus who went into the wilderness to be tempted by the temperer. After coming out of the wilderness and understanding more clearly his divine mission and ministry, we see in today's Gospel the Sermon of the Mount. The Sermon of the Mount is a tool that we have in the toolbox of every single Christian. I had my dear brother Wayne ask me, Father, what do you need a yard or a, a tape measure for? we find that there are 24 hours in a day. And there are some who believe that 24 hours should be divided three ways. Three equal parts of eight hours apiece. They say that you need about eight hours of sleep, so that takes the first eight. Those of us who have been and continue to be in the work schedule usually we understand as being a standard eight hours of work. So that takes 16 out of the 24. And the final eight, we say, should be left for leisure and to be able to enjoy life. Now in that final eight hours, we find that we shop, we find that we watch TV, 
Young people spend almost eight hours playing video games. And so, I say that if you come to church and you give an hour unto the Lord, that's approximately one hour, one-eighth of that eight-hour period. But I believe that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ intends us to know more than just to come to Mass and to celebrate. Wayne, if you could please turn down the, the... some reason we're getting feedback. Now, if you spend an extra hour in your prayer and reading of Holy Scripture, and it kind of takes, with Holy Scripture, uh, the readings on a Sunday, if we were to spend two hours out of every 24 hours, we basically are spending one quarter of one quarter of a day. There are many tools in the toolbox of a Christian. One is a yardstick to ever be reminded as we offered in today's opening or entrance that we are measured by God in our devotion. Another tool in the toolbox of a Christian is Holy Scripture. I recently talked this past week to an individual that, as the questions would ask, well, do you believe in God? Well, yes, Father, I believe in a divine being. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I've really not, I've heard of things, but I've never really read about Jesus or or some of his sayings. I want to also let you know, Father, that I don't believe in church and going to church because it is full with hypocrites, people who judge one another as they leave the church. And as somebody once said, you know, there are sometimes people are worse after they leave the church. They come to offer prayer, and then they go back to their old self. Well, I said to this individual, first of all, you can't blame a church for having sinners, just like you can't blame a hospital for having sick people. The fact remains is that we all have a ministry. If we feed the hungry, that's a ministry. If we give clothes to the naked, that's a ministry. If we serve on a committee, that's a ministry. Eric has a ministry today. He is filming filming today's Mass. Don't ever think that a ministry belongs to just a priest or to a rabbi or to a minister. God puts you on this earth for a purpose. And I believe that from our first breath to our last breath, God has a ministry for each and every single one of us. If we take that basis of Jesus, who tells us in his writings, as recorded by the four evangelists, love one another as I have loved you, that is a foundation of the toolbox by which each and every single Christian can grow and to develop, as in the case of a measuring rod, a yardstick, or a ruler. Today, we have a foundation that is put in our toolbox. We have the uniqueness in the Polish National Catholic Church of having the Word of God as a sacrament. Bishop Hodder, our first prime bishop, was enlightened not because of his own thinking, but because he was inspired through his reading of the Word of God. He believed, as we believe, that the Word of God has its own sacramental grace, 
But yet every single one of our sacraments have what we call a sanctifying grace by which we are made holy. Are we made holy? Are we sanctified before the Lord? And knowing what is contained within Holy Scripture, that is the yardstick by which we measure ourselves. The Lord Jesus Christ is another measure by which we know how close we are to him or how far we are from him according to his teachings. Today, as we read in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, it was shortly after Jesus came out of the wilderness that he had a mission. He had a ministry to preach. He came into the world to not only die for your sins and mine, but he came to illuminate us in the word that was made flesh. Jesus, when he preached, he preached mostly to the poor people, the destitute, the outcasts. And there were some who were the religious figures of his day, the scribes and the Pharisees, that they had a different motive. They did not come to listen to the wisdom of Jesus, but to rather find out how they could trap him. Because the wisdom, as we read, does not necessarily come to the proud or to the arrogant. And so this is the basis and the foundation of our faith. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Poor doesn't mean, well, hey, listen, because you don't have $50 in your pants or in your purse. That's not what Jesus was talking about. Poor in spirit is being humble. And we read again from Paul's letter. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolishness of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human might boast before God. We read in the letter of Paul to the Romans, we have all fallen short of God and his grace. I have, you have. When Jesus talked to those who came before him, they were seeking God. They did not know all the answers. And so Jesus said to them, Blessed are you if you are humble. For the kingdom of God will come to you before it comes to the wise and the arrogant and the self-righteous. Blessed are you who mourn, for you will be comforted. Again, you have to be humble to have empathy for those that are less fortunate. We all mourn within our lives, but Jesus tells us that we should mourn for others. Blessed are the meek, another word for humble, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Those who came to hear Jesus came because there was something that was lacking in their lives. And Jesus would be the one who would actually show them what righteousness was. Hunger and thirst. There's something that's lacking. There's something that needs to be filled. And that's why Jesus said, hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are 
the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Well, in the Gospel of Luke, what we call the Sermon on the Hill, Jesus expounds on this one scripture passage. And he says, but woe woe to those who show no mercy, for none will be shown unto them. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. With all the violence and the mass shootings and everything that is taking place in our world, Jesus said, you are not of the world. I have chosen you out of the world to seek righteousness. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. I am sure if we took the time and each and every single one of us could give an example, we would see that the poor, the lowly, the destitute, the outcasts are the first ones to be persecuted. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we begin this journey, by which we rely upon the words of the Lord, you are seated in the pew where others seated, were seated on a hilltop and they heard the words of Jesus that acted as the foundation of their faith. And so, as Jesus would say, and as Jesus said, rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, a true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. O God, we come to you this morning, and we ask that you would hear our prayers. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, those who will die this day and have no one to be there with them. We pray this day for the hungry and the homeless and those that are unemployed. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our dear brothers and sisters, Louise Pahalski, George Sadowski, Karen Herzig, and all our brothers and sisters who are homebound and who are recuperating in healthcare facilities. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all those who suffer from the coronavirus and its variants, as well as, and especially, the children who are suffering from RSV. We give thanks to the Lord for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. We pray this day to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all abused and neglected children in the world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence, both here and abroad. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for peace for the people of Ukraine and other places around our world where people are simply striving to live with freedom and dignity in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for all those who serve in our armed forces that God would protect and bring all those who serve safely back to their families. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the Polish National Catholic Church, for the parishes in the Polish National Catholic Church, especially this day for our parish, Holy Name of Jesus, and ask that God's blessings might rest upon our entire congregation, their family, and their friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, dear Lord, for hearing our prayers as we pray to you, our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. He who pursues justice and kindness will find life and honor. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, may be for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may it be for us our spiritual drink. O oh Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you this day with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless the sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your most holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the memory of the Passion, Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor here on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we offer you this sacrifice, bless our altar, 
with the presence of your Son. May we who have received him be changed in heart and become peaceful, compassionate, humble, and just. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his sacred ministry. Empowered by your grace and strength, may we all faithfully fulfill the ministries that you have entrusted to our care. And so therefore we join this day with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zanana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zanana in the highest. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this day with a contemporary rite, let us now turn to page 88. And as we offer each other the Eucharistic prayer number four, which is the canon of the Dutch Old Catholic Church. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord of all majesty and King of eternal glory, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In him your word was made flesh. In him the fullness of your grace was revealed in splendor. In all things he fulfilled your will and glorified your name. He proclaimed your kingdom to us. He broke the power of darkness over us. He took our guilt upon himself. He reconciled us to you and unlocked the new paradise for us. As the way, the truth, and the life, he has revealed your love to us. He humbled himself and became obedient even to death on a cross, and by rising, restored our life. On the night in which he was betrayed, to undergo that suffering, which he himself had chosen, he took bread into his hands, and lifting his eyes to you, his heavenly Father, he gave thanks, he blessed the bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup, and gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection, we celebrate. 
Your return in glory we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, and his exaltation at your right hand. We await his coming in the fullness of majesty. We here set forth the sign of our faith in him, who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gained for us eternal salvation. Send your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Holy Spirit, come to us. Fill us with your gift of grace. Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable, acceptable sacrifice through which we offer ourselves to you, so that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be a sharing in the body and blood of your Son. May all who receive these gifts from your heavenly altar always remain united with you, together with all your saints and chosen ones, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, and with all saints whose memory we keep this day, along with your prophets and apostles, with your martyrs and confessors, and all who stand about your throne in praise and prayer. Bless your church throughout the world, granted unity and peace. Renew the earth according to your promise. Remember all peoples and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father. Forever and ever. Amen. And now let us turn to page 95 and continue Holy Mass. Let us pray with confidence to the Father the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. And protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Please be seated. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are of one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now, let us greet one another with a sign of peace. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Let us pray together, my brothers and sisters, the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, 
By the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. We will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. O sacred banquet, memorial of the Last Supper, in which our Savior gifts himself to be food for mankind, and in the deepest truth unites himself with them, hear our prayers have been sent this day to your majesty, that as many of us shall receive from this altar the most sacred body and blood of our Son, of your Son, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. We pray this day. Amen. Lord, may we possess with pure hearts that which we have taken as food, and may the gifts we have received this day bring us healing and strength now and forever. Amen.
yet the Lord is waiting to show you favor. And he rises to pity you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, teach us through this Holy Eucharist to begin our ministries in reverence, continue them in obedience, and finish them in charity. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you, my dear sisters and my dear brothers. And may the grace of God go with you always. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth this day and serve not only our Lord, but one another. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.